we are entering into, I think, the world of a post, or at least a pre-transitional government, probably going from the Conservatives over to the Labour government. And at the moment, they are struggling. Not the Labour government. The Labour government, or at least the upcoming Labour government and the Labour Party at the moment, doing great. <laughs> They're doing fantastic. It's the Conservatives that are struggling, trying to decide what anything they can do to try and hang on in any way possible, because they know they're going to lose the next general election. What they are desperately trying to seek to do is to find a way to retain a bigger majority as they can. One that allows them to at least be a somewhat effective opposition. And that is what I keep on saying about why in the next general election we need to look into look into tactical voting, who to vote for in your area, and above all, give the Tories an absolute beating. Because the more beating that you give them, the more they are just going to be in this quagmire of, of civil war and just almost be unable to sort themselves out for at least a decade. And we've talked before about the possibilities that that can bring. And one of the big things that really needs to be done is high-speed rail, and in this case, HS2. Now, HS2, I've always, well, not not, not just me, but going back to our interview with, with Gareth Dennis, um, you know, our, our big train expert <laughs> that we've had on this channel said it himself. HS2 is not about speed, but that's what it has been sold by many people. And I think that's a mis-selling of, of the advantages of what HS2 can bring. What HS2 is about is about capacity. To take all the fast trains off the current track, put them on the HS2 track, so that then you can have more slow trains on those current tracks. That means more local and regional trains. That will be a massive boom. Meanwhile, of course, do you want to take a fast train? Well, excellent. HS2 is right there for you. But the big problem now is becoming the ridiculous spiraling costs that are coming out of this because we have seen time and time again that the government just has not bothered to really invest in infrastructure, not only just in HS2, but various other projects. And now all these chickens are coming home to roost. The rack crisis, the crisis in the NHS, you know, Brexit, all these issues, all these myriad things that have been building up for years and years and years, needing sorting proper projects that need proper funding, that need proper policy behind them in order to actually solve the problem. Instead, we've got nothing. And instead, you've got a sticking plaster, slapped across it and said, yeah, that'll do. But in the meantime, it doesn't fix the underlying issues, doesn't really solve the problems. So, there is now an unfortunate rumour going around that they are going to axe the Manchester leg. That HS1, or at least, well, the part, or well, at least the first part of HS2, shall we say, the... London to Birmingham leg is going to get built. Then after that, it's just going to be abandoned. And if that happens, that is a absolute travesty. That is an absolute travesty if that happens. HS2 is a huge, monumental infrastructure project, the type of which we have not built in this country for years, decades even. But we need this type of vital infrastructure because the benefits it would bring are monumental to public transport, to the economy, to even jobs. And yet, you'd think the Tories would be all for that. But no, because, well, oh, it involves spending money. Can't we? Can't a private firm build it instead for us? No, because that's not how it works. These types of big infrastructure projects require government funding. And now we've got the UK infrastructure chief talking about what a tragedy this would be. And I agree, it would be an absolute tragedy if this goes ahead. 
But before we go into his comments, uh, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, the one-off station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. There's the, the YouTube thank you button, and of course, the Pony Club down below as well. So this is what he has had to say about this. So Sir John Armit, the chair of the National Infrastructure Commission, which is responsible for, 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 uh, which is responsible for providing expert advice to the UK government, said that the cancellation of this route would tell the world that the UK runs away when it starts to see some challenges. That's the truth. There are challenges in around HS2, but no one wants to try and take on these things. And instead, it would be a disaster. It would be a tragedy. And it can't get to grip with these. And this is it. Even Boris Johnson chimed in. Boris Johnson told the Times that this was a total treasury-driven nonsense. And it made no sense to deliver a, a mutilized HS2. The government have refused to guarantee the network that will reach even Manchester, despite the £2.3 billion already having been invested in stage two of the line. And this is a leak that has come from it. This is all leaked documents. This is exactly the same that we heard about the green stuff. It is going to be a disaster on this. But he's had more to say on this. So this is what Armit had to say about the scrapping of this Manchester leg. He said, I think it would be a tragedy. What we have to do here is get to the grips of the costs. There are massive benefits to the economy by continuing. This project from the beginning has been about capacity. It's about leveling up, improving connectivity between London, the largest city in the UK, and its two most substantial cities in the UK. If we don't continue, what are we saying to the rest of the world? What are we saying to all those investors who want to bring, uh, to want to buy, uh, want, we, we want to bring into the UK? Here is a country which sets itself ambitions and then runs away when it starts to see some challenges. We have to meet these challenges. And that's right. This is, this is it. This is a challenge. The Tories are not rising to that challenge. And if we do not build HS2, it will be a massive, tra it, will be, it will be a travesty, it will be a disaster, and we will have wasted a ton of public money. We'll have wasted money on a project that never gets built. And whose fault is that? It's the Tories. No one else's. And yet, this government, which all talk, we want to level up the UK, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. You build these infrastructure projects. You build these types of things which improve the economy. It improves transport. It improves connectivity. It should be, should be an absolute no-brainer to build this and to fund this. No problem. But the Treasury is starting to get a bit jittery because, oh, too much money is going on HS2. And this has been the continuing story of all, and especially during Rishi Sunak's time as well. Remember the leveling up white paper? First two chapters saying, this is the problem. This is how much money you need to spend. When we get to the Treasury chapter, the Treasury has gone, well, you've asked for 500 million. We're only going to give you uh, maybe 100 million, uh, maybe two, if you're lucky for some projects. Leveling up. Time and time and time again, the Tories get told, you need to spend money and have good policies to solve this problem, and they do not do it. And then this creates longer-term problems, and it creates a awful situation that just does not get fixed and just gets even more worse and worse, which results in you having to spend even more money to try and solve the problem when you should have solved the problem in the first place. So I really do hope this does get built. I really do. Um, I do hope when we get the Labour government back in, we can restore the northern leg. 
um, especially up to Sheffield. That will be a massive boon for the North. Um, we'll see what happens uh, when Labour get in. And I fear that this is going to get axed. I fear this is going to get axed. And I fear that once again, this is going to be get played just like we've seen with the green cuts or at least the, the, the green policy watering down and the, the cuts that Sunak has made. Oh, well, um, yes, we're, we're doing it to save money. But the thing is, HS2 pays for itself. Once it's built, it pays for itself. It's the type of infrastructure we have desperately needed in the UK for so long and has not been built. And yet you have a government that talks a big game about building these types of projects, about having these types of ambitions, and yet whenever it gets challenged, it gets slightly difficult, it gets abandoned. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.